What's up, tweeners? Welcome back to another Tweener at Tennis video today here on the channel. Today, we have a very special guest, Vlad Orlov, Ukrainian tennis player who has graciously talked to us about what has been going on in his life and how the current situations has been affecting not just him, the Ukrainian Tennis Federation, and what it's like to play during all of this and how he's been able to kind of cope with it, but at the same time, not cope with it at all. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure to go show Orlov some love. And um, make sure to go show your support for these Ukrainian tennis players that are going through a hard time. And I'll see you in the next video. Please listen. Please follow. Please share this video with people around you to get the awareness out as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Vlad, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. I know it's been really hard with traveling and dealing with what's going on. So we wanted to get your perspective on what is happening in your, your, in your world. And thank you again for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you also. Um, can you can you talk to us about in terms of Ukrainian tennis, what's happening and how you're feeling about it? And I mean, there I, I have no words to describe it. I wanted to hear your perspective and have you on about what's going on with not just yourself, but other Ukrainians on tour. Well, uh, I don't know, actually, about all the all the guys uh, from Ukraine, where are they at the moment? But I feel like uh, all, all the players who are still in Ukraine, probably they are stuck and they, they also they cannot practice. So obviously they they I don't know what they have just survived. They are thinking about life at the moment, just not about tennis, unfortunately. But I know that uh, some guys are uh, outside of Ukraine, like me, and uh, yeah, they, they, I don't know, they have to, to keep playing because they cannot go back home at the moment. Of course, they can, but, uh, you know, it's uh, kind of dangerous at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, especially for me, uh, I, did, I haven't realized it that, uh, yet, but probably... I cannot uh, come back home like ever. I don't know, mm -hmm. and I don't have a place like home at the moment. And I have to, we have to travel all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, really, really tough. And of course, uh, because my family is there, my my home city is Kharkiv, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, under attack uh, heavily at the moment. Uh, my universe, my uh, the building where I was studied studying uh, my university was destroyed uh, today in the morning uh, by uh, missiles strikes and uh, yeah it's really tough to watch all of this all the videos and uh, all this news also the big the biggest square in in europe yeah the building was uh, was uh, so one missile strike uh, uh, just a hit in in the building where I was studying for six years, mm. and uh, yeah, and also the the biggest square in Europe, the Freedom Square, which is also located in the center of Kharkiv, also destroyed at the moment, uh, and it's very close to to my house where I lived for for all these years. So I don't mm. know if my house is still is still there if it's. If it's still alive, you know. Uh, I, I'm uh, I'm so sorry to hear that, and I really appreciate you sharing that story with us. And for you, we saw yesterday with Yastremska and Leon. She said that it was really tough for her, at least. And we saw that with you after you won your opening qualifier, uh, the Gran Canaria uh, Challenger. How emotional you guys are, and rightfully so. And I think a quote that she had was. Um, her heart's at home, but her head's in the match. And I was wondering if you can kind of walk us through what it's like to play through something that's going on that affects not just your life, but everyone else around it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very tough, you know, to practice, to fully focus on tennis at the moment, on the, on, on the, on the matches, uh, on the, uh, but the only thing that we uh, we have to do is just fight, yeah. Like, uh, like the, you know, the warriors in Ukraine, we have to to fight on the court the same way, because this is the best thing we can do at the moment. And uh, yeah, but it's really tough. It's almost impossible yet yeah, to 
to play, to be honest, because you you cannot concentrate. You you, for example, me, I'm I'm I cannot sleep in the night. I, I'm, I'm following the news nonstop. I'm I'm always on the phone with my family. Uh, I'm calling them every two hours. I don't know to to ask how is it going if if they're safe. If, you know everything is all right but yeah it's really tough and you're saying that you can't sleep like you have you been able to focus at all on court i know you're able to pull one out in the challenger but have you been able to focus at all with what's going on well on the other side yeah of course when you're you know when you're on the phone all the time you're following this uh, information the the news uh, Sometimes, yeah, just to step on the court and play is just, you know, to to uh, change change your change your activities, you know, just to yeah, to some physical activities. It's uh, yeah, just you know, to not lose your lose your mind because you know it's it's really tough to 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 check all the news all the time. It's just yeah, very so, very tough. No, it's very tough and. I wanted to ask you one question because I know this is a really hard topic for you to talk about. So we really do appreciate you being here is have you talked to any, I guess, Russian players on tour that are playing with you about the situation or have you talked about how the Russian flag is not next to any of the players, whether they disagree with going on or the current situation, have you talked to them about it at all? Or has there been any like, dialogue that you guys have had uh well yeah a lot of uh, russian russian tennis players uh, uh sending some messages uh, uh the first thing they are saying that they they have nothing uh, nothing uh, the same as uh, their president they are not uh, uh you know they are not accepting his war that he started and uh, they are saying that we are not supporting him but you know uh, my my point of view is that uh, all of them have the responsibility for what's going on because you know no, i didn't see any any uh, like point of view regarding this situation in any social media or anywhere else i don't know except maybe a rublev who who was saying something after his uh, matches and uh, uh, making some pictures? No war on the uh, on the cameras after the matches, but mm. all, most of them just uh, no nothing zero. And you know, inaction equals complicity. So mm. for me, uh, I'm saying that okay, I'm not I'm not uh, I don't have anything like against you guys, but you know, you all have the responsibility for what's going on. And and those are some very strong words. And and we've seen a lot of Russian players, at least in the last couple of days, we've seen Pavel Chenkova come out with a statement. We've seen Potapova come out yeah. with a statement, but nothing really to the words that you're saying, like no one besides Rublev. And now that we have a Russian number one and the men's tour, it's going to be, it's very tough to kind of see what's going on and have someone like that be at the top of the rankings. So it's very it's been a whirlwind and but I really do appreciate you coming on and talking to us about this. And um, I, uh, I'm very excited to tell your story because this is something that everyone needs to hear. Yeah. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. I mean, uh, I wanted to share that. So yeah. Thanks again for you. No worries. Thank you. And uh, I'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.